Hi, my name is Mia. My driving question is how to take care of a redhead tree frog and what are the pros and cons of having one. I got interested in this topic because I've been wanting one for a very long time and I thought it would be interesting to learn about. Red-eyed tree frogs are pretty majestic and agile creatures. They are really nice pets to have. They have very few cons and lots of pros. They don't need a lot of attention but need, do need lots of stuff to live. Some things you need to care for a red-eyed tree frog. It needs food and water but only give it food every two to three days and water every other day. It needs lots of plants and some bedding to hide in. They need white in their tank for heat because they're cold-blooded. If they have discoloration of the skin, you need to make sure it has plenty of water, which needs to be 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Pros of having a red-eyed tree frog. Red-eyed tree frogs are not demanding pets. They are not poisonous. It's fairly simple to set up their terrarium. If they bite, it will not hurt you and you will most likely not feel it. They have lots of unique features. For example, they can color change. It's not hard to take care of a red-eyed tree frog. They are not rare, so you won't have trouble finding them. Red-eyed tree frogs don't need much attention, unlike dogs or cats. You don't have to feed them that often, so you don't have to worry if you skip a day. Some cons of having a red-eyed tree frog. Red-eyed tree frogs aren't for handling. They sleep during the day, so you won't see them that often. Red-eyed tree frogs have teeth so they can bite. They are very noisy. They need lots of stuff in their cage. They are kind of expensive. The red-eyed tree frog needs experienced owners. They are so small you might not see them. They can squeeze through small spots so they could get out of their cage. Fun facts. Red-eyed tree frogs can swim. They get around to one to two inches. They live around 8 to 12 years. The red-eyed tree frog changes color because of their mood. They're one of a kind. They're nocturnal. They are cold-blooded. Now we're going to watch a short video of a red-eyed tree frog. Red-eyed tree frogs are certainly the poster child of the American conservation movement. I've seen their photographs in all types of journals from National Geographic to Discovery Channel and in advertisements throughout many different industries. And the reason for that is because of their very unique look giant red eyes on a frog with orange feet and blue sides is a striking thing to look at. They inhabit the Central and South American rainforests. I see these all the time in my travels to Costa Rica. Now we're going to see if you listen to my presentation. We're going to play a fun book it. enjoyed learning about the red-eyed tree frog as much as I did. Hi, I'm Kai, and this is my presentation on how baseball bats have evolved throughout the years. Who invented the metal baseball bat? William Schroyer invented the first metal baseball bat in 1924. His invention has sold over 2 million bats per year. In the 70s, Easton created a more stronger bat. They made the aluminum bat industry skyrocket in the United States, but still, they were not allowed in the MLB. Interesting facts about the first bats. Batters usually made their own bats. The first metal bat was made in 1924 by William Shorter. In 1859, it was established that baseball bats can be no longer than two and a half inches in diameter. In the USA, two million wooden bats are made each year. During the mid-1940s, the Nickenbockers were playing a game under their own rules. They were required to bring their own bats. 1884, Louisville Slaughter was born. In the 1890s, bats could no longer be flat at the end. Baseball bats today. This year's top bat brands are Louisville Slaughter, Easton, DeMarini, and Matri. Noel Nine started his career at 19 years old. It ended when he was 42. He has pitched for many of teams, including the Texas Rangers, New York Mets, California Angels, and the Houston Astros. 
Babe Ruth started his career when he was 19, just like Lone Ryan, and ended with his career when he was 40. He played for the Boston Red Sox, New York Yankees, and the Boston Browns. I hope you enjoyed my presentation and I have prizes for the top three winners. I'm Bryson and how you take care of goats. This inspired me because I've always liked goats and I've been wanting to learn about them more. What do they need to drink and eat? Milk from the bottle or mom, clean water as the main drink, and hay to eat. What kind of shelter do they need? They need a three-sided shed, a pole barn, which is the classic animal barn, and lastly, stroller wood shavings for the bed. And it could be both. How much and what kind of land do they need? 30, 30 to 50 square feet for grazing, or just eating, and one acre per goat. And it obviously doesn't have to be precise. Next is where and when did they come from? They came from Asia and originated between 8,000 to 9,000 years ago. What is the most common and the most rare type of goat? The Nubian goat is the most common to where the Aparawa goat is the most rare. Lastly, here's my interview. Who are you? I'm Sue Green. Why do you have, why do you have so many goats? We store them in the barn. Why do you have so many goats? We started out as just one goat. I got one goat, my dad did, and um, he got it as a companion goat for a, a trail goat for the 4-H. And the, of course, the 4 H goat made the sale, and we were ended up with one goat, and we kept her. And she is the one that started all this. Wow. What was her name? Her name was Nanny. <laughs> That's cute. Very original. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have any tried to run away? No. No. They don't. They they like it here. <laughs> could they be kept as a house pet with the right precautions? They could. Um, as far as house brushing. You're not going to do it. You're going to have to put a diaper on. You know, control that. So, but they make excellent pants. I hope you like my presentation and my game kit. And these are the top three winners. save our ocean life. One thing we can do to save our ocean is to cut down on plastic needs like plastic water bottles and plastic straws because people can litter and the trash goes down the drain on the side of the road and the drain leads to the ocean. And fish will try to eat the trash because they will try to eat anything they see floating in the water. And also this mostly happens in coastal areas. Some ways to keep the ocean clean is to one, educate yourself. Two, cut down on plastic use. Three, Hold containers accountable. Four, beware of chemicals in your garbage or on your lawn. Five, recognize the harm of an individual litter. Six, volunteer to help clean up. Seven, donate to an ocean charity. The people in the future volunteer to help clean up the beach. Have you ever wondered how much trash in the ocean in 2021? There are 5.25 trillion pieces of plastic waste estimated to be in our oceans. 769,000 tons flow. 4 billion miles at 500 per kilometer below the surface. If loading continues to happen in 2050, there will be 850 to 950 million tons of plastic waste in our oceans. This video shows how to keep our ocean trash free. Eight million metric tons of plastic trash enters the sea from land every year. The equivalent of five plastic bags filled with trash for every foot of coastline in the world. Across our ocean, plastic trash flows into circulation. Dispersed almost everywhere, but concentrating in huge swaths in the midst of global currents, breaking down into smaller and smaller pieces, ingested by species across the marine world, and sinking to the bottom of the sea. In order to solve the plastic packaging problem, we need to effectively rethink the entire system. For one which is linear, i.e. take, make, dispose, 
to one where it can be recovered and fed back into the economy as a valuable plastic material, or one where it is bio benign and it can enter the environment. The ultimate goal of the new plastics economy is to design an economy where plastic packaging never becomes waste. And to do that, we need every single player in the chain to change the way that they do things. We can make a big difference by using our own bottles instead of plastic water bottles. And in other ways, by using metal straws instead of plastic ones. I'm going to get us all started on saving the ocean by handing out metal reusable straws. My dad and godfather started four oceans five years ago and sold over a million straws to date. It goes to show the big things that we can accomplish just with a few friends. My driving question is, what is Lego's origin and what makes them popular today? This interested me because I like building Legos and wanted to know how they are popular. We are going to be watching um, the Lego history. Not a lot of people would know that the first Lego toys were actually made out of wood and were not necessarily bricks. Um, for the first 16 years or so, we, we actually only did wooden products. <laughs> In 1958, we, we introduced the tube and the brick, which is also the birth of the Lego system where every element will fit. In 1962, the Lego Globe reinvented the wheel. 1969, we invented the, the duplo brick, which is a bigger brick for smaller hands. We introduced the Lego Technics sets in 1978, giving, uh, offering a more complex building experience to typically a little older child. Another important milestone for the Lego system was the introduction of figures. Our figures were yellow because we didn't want them to represent any specific race, we wanted them to be the figures in themselves. Lego Star Wars was the first time we, we based a Lego theme on a story that we had not invented ourselves, which was quite an important milestone for the company as well. Mindstorms uh, is, is a mix of mixing robotics with, with Lego building and it was launched together with MIT. Um, the latest versions came in 2013, which is 15 years after we launched the first, the first of these robots. The plural word for Legos is Lego. And Lego makes 125 million pieces a day, and for 17 years they made wood toys, and now they're Legos, classic toys. My personal creation is uh, this Lego Ferrari. It was a racing car, and they made it a car. If you look on the bottom, you can see the engine on it, and it actually steers. This is the Lego Nintendo. Um, it was built because of Mario, and they wanted to recreate it. I enjoyed learning about the Lego history, and I hope you did too. Hi, my name is Chloe. And my name is Kaylee. And our driving question is how we can learn about, about these, these extremely, extremely dangerous, dangerous animals. animals. We will be teaching a class about these extinct, extraordinary animals. We list about the four animals on our slideshow. The first animal we put on our slideshow was the world's largest snake called the Titanoboa. We list this all on our notes below. But did you know that the Titanoboa was the largest snake and the Titanoboa can go 15 miles per hour? Did you know that the Titanoboa is 42.7 feet long? It would eat crocodiles. It was the actually not venomous at all. But I bet you didn't know that the Titanoboa can stay in the water for a long time. It can hold its breath for about 45 minutes. The reason that they went extinct was because of climate change, but the dropping temperatures actually favored the appearance of other snakes. I will be talking about the saber-toothed tiger. It had these great big long tusks, 
but the tiger itself was approximately eight feet tall. One a cool thing is it could jump up to 12 feet high. The, the lifespan was really long. They lived 20 through 40 years. The way they would kill their prey is by biting in the vital area with a deep gash and then would wait for the prey to bleed out. So if you want to know how long ago the saber-toothed tiger went extinct, well, it went extinct about 12,000 years ago. But the reason they went extinct was because of global warming and being hunted by men. Now the next animal we put on our slideshow was the T-Rex. It was actually the first dinosaur to roam the earth. They were alive a long time ago. It, it was about 65 million years ago. They, they could be up to 40 feet wide and 12 feet tall. That's really big. They could eat up to 140, four, 140 kilograms. That's a lot, at least I think so. But a cool thing about them is they can run very fast, at least 17 miles per hour. The way the T-Rex went extinct was kind of cool. They went extinct because of a giant catastrophic asteroid. We also added a funny video for the T-Rex. The next animal is the Megalodon. The Megalodon is the largest shark in the world. This shark can grow between 15 and 18 meters in length. Megalodons can eat at least 2,500 pounds every day. This shark lives the coast of Denmark and the most southern in New Zealand. Megalodons went extinct 3.5 million years ago. How they went extinct when the planet entered a freeze of global cooling. We hope you learned a thing or two. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening. It's all Hi, my name is Nathan, and I'm doing my driving question on what is the history of Britneys and what makes them ideal hunting dogs. I chose to do my genius hour on this because even as a Britney owner, as I didn't know that much about Britneys as I thought I did. The Britney is a very fun-loving breed, and it's not just a man's best friend, but it's also a hunter's best friend. They use their sleek small bodies to fit into small spaces that other big hunting dogs can't do, fit into. Their fur is almost perfect for their line of work because it's short enough not to get caught in brambles and thorns while being thick enough to protect them from the elements. I chose to do my genius hour on Britney's because as I realized before genius hour started, I did not know much about my dogs I thought I did. I did not know that the AKC, the American Kennel Club, changed their name from Britney Spaniels to Britney's in 1982. I didn't know that they were named after the place they were originally from between the 17th and 19th century in Brittany, France. One of the most surprising things I found out was that they were bred to assist poachers in illegally hunting pheasants. This is a video to further explain the ups and downs of Brittany's. I hope you enjoy. 
full of energy and eagerness to please, the Brittany is a medium-sized breed that delights in all kinds of outdoor adventures with its owners. A compact, lively, fun-loving hunting dog, the Brittany, also known as the American Brittany and the Brittany Spaniel, sports a beautifully patterned coat, long legs, and energy for days. This enthusiasm, along with their big brains, joyful disposition, and a willingness to please, makes training a treat for dog and human alike. Brittany's thrive when given a job to do, whether that's working as a bird dog or turning heads in dog sports. Bred as gun dogs, they're often used as hunting companions. But with their manageable size, low maintenance grooming needs, and friendly personalities, the Brittany can be the perfect family pet. Just so long as that family is sufficiently outdoorsy and has enough pet to keep up with their pup. Brittany's come in colors such as white and liver, white and green, or white and brown, white and orange, white and white and rowing. They usually have a life expectancy of 12 to 15 years. Males can be up to 19 to 20 inches tall and females can get to 18 to 20 inches tall. Both male and female can get to weigh up to 30 to 40 pounds. There's usually a very, there's actually a variation of Britneys that are black and white. However, the ATC, the American Kennel Club, doesn't accept them as a Britney breed. I hope you learned about Britneys throughout this presentation. I hope you learned more about my favorite breed of dog. Hello, my name is Aaliyah, and my driving question is, what were the terrorist attacks on 9-11, and why are they a big part in our history? The reason I'm so interested in 9-11 is, whenever I was in fifth grade on 9-11, we watched a news broadcast on the terrorist attacks, and I was automatically so interested in it and wanted to learn more about it. Here's a replica of the Twin Towers pre-9-11. Next slide, please. On September 11th, 2001, Two hijacked planes crashed into the glimmering 1,776 feet tall Twin Towers in Manhattan, New York, killing 2,563 innocent people, 343 firefighters, 71 police officers, and it also killed 10 hijackers. In D.C., a third plane hit the Pentagon, killing 189 people and 5 hijackers. The fourth plane hit a field in Pennsylvania after passengers fought the hijackers, killing everyone on board. 56 minutes after the impact on the South Tower, it came crumbling down, and one hour and 42 minutes for the North Tower. The damage from 9-11 cost $40 billion. Next slide, please. Here are the flights on 9-11. Flight 175 is the plane that hit the South Tower. It departed at 8.14 a.m. and crashed at 9.03 a.m. There were 56 passengers, including the five hijackers. The intended destination of the flight was supposed to be the Los Angeles International Airport, but instead it was steered in a different direction, Manhattan, New York. And now we are going to be watching um, a video of the South Tower collapsing. Flight 11 is the plane that crashed into the North Tower. It departed at 7.59 a.m. and crashed at 8.46 a.m. There were 81 passengers, including the five hijackers. The intended destination of the flight was also supposed to be the Los Angeles International Airport, but instead it was in the same direction as Flight 175, Manhattan, New York. Flight 77 is the plane that hit the Pentagon. It departed at 7.20 a.m. and crashed at 8.20 a.m. There were 58 passengers, including the five hijackers. The intended destination of the flight was supposed to be the Los Angeles International Airport, but instead it was in, this different, in a different direction, Washington, D.C. See the plane coming in right there? Let me just... Flight 93 is the plane that crashed into a field in Pennsylvania. It departed at 8.42 a.m. and crashed at 10.03 a.m. There were 37 passengers, including the four hijackers. Its intended destination was the San Francisco International Airport, but passengers bravely fought off the hijackers and won. The passengers knew that they had to do something to keep it from hitting more American structures that meant something to the American people. Sadly, the passengers knew that they were already going to face their fate, so they crashed it into a field in Pennsylvania. A saying, let's roll, came from a passenger named Todd Beamer when heading to fight. These passengers were so brave, so we want to honor them for stopping another catastrophe.
As you can see on the board, the planes came in different directions. Flight 175 only lost its landing gear, its engine, and its fuselage section. Flight 11 only lost its landing gear, but left the rest to burn in the fire. Interesting fact, about 9,000 people visit the 9-11 memorial per day to pay their respects. Next slide, please. There's a story called The Miracle of Stairwell B about a woman, woman named Josephine Harris who was found by firefighters at Letter Company 6 on the 22nd floor of the North Tower. She was tired and crying, unable to continue. One of the firefighters, Bill Butler, carried her down the stairs while other firefighters tried to find a chair to make it easier to carry her. At 10.28, there was a rumbling sound. They had to duck into stairwells and random rooms for cover. Dust and debris were everywhere, filling the firefighters' eyes, ears, and mouths. There were dozens, plus Bill and Harris. The 14 of them were scattered inside the stairwell. Miraculously, they survived the fall of the tower. Why? No one knows for sure, but they were apparently in a structurally unique location of the 110-story tower. Since 9-11, the world has changed a lot. The events shaped the global response to terrorism and raised new troubling questions about security, privacy, and treatment of prisoners. Also, in November 2001, President Bush signed the Aviation and Transportation Security Act, which created the Transportation Security Administration, handing passenger screening over to employees. 9-11 is one of the scariest things I've ever heard of, and I can't think of what people went through. I would love to visit the 9-11 Memorial one day. I hope you took my presentation about 9-11 to heart. Go to the next slide. And remember, never forget 9-11. one note at a time, while the guitar can play six. Playing guitar improves brain power. Only about 10% of the world can play guitar. The first guitar-like instrument was called the bull harp, which you will see in the video. The guitar is just like a hand, because it has a head, a neck, and a body. The guitar is well known, but where did it come from? Let's find out. The exact origin of the guitar is a bit of a mystery, but its history is a bit easier to track. Guitar-like stringed instruments have been around since at least ancient times, and possibly even longer. The oldest known guitar-like instruments are at least 4,000 years old and come from ancient Egypt. They're called bull harps, and they were made of a tortoise shell, a bent wooden stick for the neck, and silk strings. By the time the Greeks rolled around a few thousand years later, they had invented their own version of the bull harp, called a guitarra, which is likely where the word guitar first comes from. Okay, um, now I'm going to play the chords on this list. I will start with A minor and go down the list. Hello, my name 
is Jacqueline. My driving question is, how do you take care of a baby goat? This interested me because I wanted to learn more about how you take care of a goat. First, we would go bottle feed the baby and see her. because she'll drink it pretty quick. Now would you please turn you to your brochure. We're going to talk about sleeping. They do not sleep during the night for a long time. They sleep about five hours in the night. In all, they sleep to six to eight hours. How to bottle feed. Sometimes you have to bottle feed because the moms can't or the moms pass away due to natural things. It takes five to six months. You should feed them four times a day if they will eat that much or every three to four hours, depending on how much that goat will eat. You feed them according to how old they are, what they can and cannot eat. They cannot eat garlic, chocolate, and caffeine or meats, also citrus fruits. To see if you are listening, what are some things they cannot eat? Thank you for 
listening to me and helping me learn more about gifts. Hi, I'm Parker, and my driving question is, who is Jason Tatum, and how does he make an impact on basketball? Jason Tatum plays basketball in the NBA for the Boston Celtics. He was born March 3rd, 1998, St. Louis, Missouri, and averages 28 points per game, and he went to Chamond College Preparatory School. He plays for the Boston Celtics, which were founded by Walter A. Brown in 1946. The head coach is I'm Yukida. We're going to be watching a video all about how he is an up-and-coming up superstar. Ever since the All-Star break, Jason Tatum has been tearing up the league in an attempt to will the Celtics to a top four seed in the East. He's quickly becoming one of the best two-way players in the entire NBA, but just how good is Jason Tatum? What is his ceiling as a player? And is he a future superstar? mark on the game comes from his elite scoring. Able to score from all three levels, both on and off the ball. On the ball, Tatum has proved to be a viable shot creator, able to generate good shot opportunities for himself at a high level. A lot of these shots come as a result of Tatum creating separation through his strong ball handling and footwork, allowing him to score out of the pick and roll or in isolation situations, often going to his strong step back or pull up jumper to score on these, and showcasing a strong post game. Part of what makes Tatum's shot creation so effective is his ability to make tough shots. And his kid's name is Christopher Jason Tatum Jr. And his sibling is Jacob Tatum. And his wife is Bella B. Harris. He makes 8.4 rebounds per game and 4.9 assists per game. And 15.1 player impact estimate. And this year, he will be replacing Kevin Durant in the 2022 NBA lineup. Off the court, he plays with his son and his cute dog, which he named Kobe for the honor of Kobe Bryant's death. And when he went to college, he only went for one year, and that year he placed third. And in high school, he averaged 29.8 points, 9.2 rebounds, and he was undefeated. And then he became a five-star recruit, and now he is one of the best in the NBA. This year became just the fifth person in Celtics history to score 50-plus points in a playoff game. And this season, so far, he has made 203 three-pointers. In conclusion, Jason Tatum keeps getting better and better, and he will probably be the next basketball superstar. And that is it, and I hope you have a dunking day. Very cute. Today we will be talking about engineering. The reason why I was interested in engineering is because I've always thought that the thir their thought process was intelligent. Engineering is one of the most important jobs in the world. It solves a lot of world problems that we have every day that we need to be fixed. The three main types of engineering consist of mechanical, electrical, and civil engineering. Engineering in college. The average amount of time for engineers in college is four years total. 65% of engineers get a bachelor's degree in engineering. This means that there is more people that make it to be an engineer than people that don't. What do mechanical engineers make? Mechanical engineers are the most popular types of engineering. They usually make power producing machines with, for big companies like NASA and mechanical companies. Mechanical engineers make $56,000 to $100,000 per year. What do electrical engineers make? Electrical engineers make a lot of electrical machines like communication systems, navigation systems, and radars. In Lumpia, Texas, you can make up to $76,000 a year. That means you can make a lot just staying in Longview. Electrical engineering is one of the types of engineers that I am very interested in. What do civil engineers do? Civil engineering is very popular. They are sort of like an architect, but they don't design, but think of the designs. Civil engineers engineer buildings and construction. They help architects find out how to make sturdy buildings and withstand natural disasters.
conclusion, engineering is a very good college degree is if you want to make a lot of money. It is also very fun. I love engineering. My name is Judy and my driving question is what is the disadvantages and advantages of dyslexia? Dyslexia is a learning disability that affects one out of five people. It can be passed down through generations. This is a video on how uh, dyslexic people see and the letters are flying because that's just how our brain processes. <laughs> of dyslexia so we have a long memory, very creative, good at making friends, very observant, and an outside of top, the box type of person. His advantages are dyslexia comes with depression, ADHD, stress, and anger issues. Getting words confused and letters needs more help in school than others. Zoning out a lot and spelling. Celebrities with dyslexia are Albert Einstein, Thomas Edison, Tom Holland, Zendaya Coleman, and Bella Thorne. I have a word search puzzle. Ready, set, go. I became interested in this topic because I have dyslexia and I wanted to show you a day in the life of having dyslexia for me. Thanks for listening and I hope you enjoyed. Hello, my name is Kinsey. My driving question is what is autism and how does it affect people? I got interested in this subject because my cousin has autism and I just found it really interesting to learn about. Autism is a disability that some people have to live with. People are born with autism and they can't get rid of it because there is no cure. And this is a video describing what autism is. According to the Centers for Disease Control, autism affects an estimated 1 in 54 children in the United States. You've probably heard a lot of thoughts and ideas about autism, but here's an overview of what we know. 
Autism, Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD, is a neurodevelopmental disorder that affects a person's social and communication abilities. Persons with ASD also have areas of strong interest and sometimes have repetitive behavior and sensory sensitivities. Autism is sometimes associated with strengths in the areas of visual memory, music, art, math, and science, but each person with ASD is unique. Autism is a spectrum disorder and varies significantly from person to person. Some people with ASD may require significant support in their daily lives, while others may need less support, and some live entirely independently. Changes in brain development associated with autism begin during the prenatal period. These changes are associated with differences in genetics. It is possible to diagnose ASD when a child is between 18 and 24 months of age. Early behavioral intervention helps children with autism learn to communicate and socially interact and has a significant impact on long-term outcome. Support for learning social and communication skills can be helpful throughout adolescence and adulthood. Here are facts that I learned. You cannot get rid of your autism. Some autistic people are better at some things. Boys are more likely to get autism than girls. There is no cure for ASD. Many autistic people show repetitive behaviors and don't have a lot of interest. National Autism Day is April 2nd. Autism cannot be detected before you are born. There is no law that if you have autism, you can't drive. We have a peer who lives with autism. I got the opportunity to interview Cohen and ask three questions about his autism. I do have his permission to share his responses and his name. What is it like to have autism? Cohen said, when it comes to academics, it's easy, but it's kind of hard to focus. What are three advantages of autism? Cohen said, I have good intelligence. What are di the disadvantages of autism? Cohen said, it's hard for me to focus and I have social awkwardness. And that's it. I like learning about this subject and I like that I got the opportunity to interview Cohen and I have learned that autistic people have great opportunities in life. My name is JC and my topic is, what is the history of the Eiffel Tower and its importance? I have always been interested in the, in the tower and already knew so much that I have been wanting to share. We are fixing to watch a, a video of the Eiffel Tower being built. This is right now it's first starting to be built. Just its legs. That is the tip top and the construction. So on January 28, 1887, Gustave Eiffel had made the Eiffel Tower. So these are just it being built from here to the very end. He finished building it on March 31, 1889. It was made of wrought iron and was built in Paris, France. You're never going to guess this, but how tall do y'all think the tower actually is? Two hundred feet. Nine thousand fifty five. Okay. Next. Five hundred feet. Okay. So, can you click it? Um, Just the space bar. So, to the tip, it's nine hundred eighty four feet tall, but one thousand and sixty three, including its base. Next. Its importance in Paris. The tower is a powerful and distinctive symbol in the city. Did you know that it was built to be the main attraction in Paris? Yep, it was built to be the main attraction at Paris's World Fair in 1889. Crazy facts. The Eiffel Tower can change size due to the weather. 
This is because of the material that it is built out of. Warmer weather increases a size six inches each summer. Another fact is that the tower had caught fire in 1956, destroying the structure summit. Oh no! In addition to this, Hitler also ordered the tower to be destroyed so Allied groups could not come for him. It was targeted during World War II, and last but not least, there's an office. It's also 135 years old. Wow, can you believe it? Next. The office. I know I mentioned the office, but do you know how much, uh, know much about it or where it's at? According to the website, can no one visit Gustav Eiffel's office? It's at the tip top of the tower. Gustav Eiffel would have work meetings and so much more. And also, there nobody is allowed up at the in the office anymore. Next, please. So these are just some pictures that I've got, and uh, these are the blueprints, the first and second floor, and the first and second floor, and then the third floor, which is called a cupola. Next. Representation. The Eiffel Tower represents the powerful and distinctive symbol of the city, like I already said. But it also impressed the entire world by its stature and genius design over 130 years ago. Alrighty, now it's time for Take a Guess. <laughs> How many people do you all think visit the Eiffel Tower each year? 3.5 million. Okay. Alright, can you press it please? About 6 million people visit the Eiffel Tower every year. Why do you think the tower is shaped the way it is? It's based off of simple physics and is designed so that the wind will balance it. Next. Destroyed. Knowing all those crazy facts, you would think that that would be all, but no. So this happened. The tower was destroyed in 1909 because it was supposed to be an exhibit. Instead, it was torn down and scrapped. City officials opted to save, the, save it after recognizing its value. Can y'all say Eiffel Tower in French? <laughs> you feel. All right, click it, please. You would say La Tour Eiffel. More facts. The Eiffel Tower was once the world's largest billboard, was once yellow, and for four decades, the tower was the tallest structure. Next, please. Christmas time. Every year the tower gets decorated with shimmering lights. These are just a few photos that I've gotten in from over the years that they've taken. Who hated the Eiffel Tower? Can you believe somebody actually hated the tower? I can't. A man named Mupassant hated the tower. He thought the tower was ugly and it blocked his sky. Alrighty then. Next please. How did people, sorry, how did French people feel about the Eiffel Tower? Receiving angry letters saying the tower never did fit into the feel of the city, a team of artists rejected the plan from the get-go. Weighing around 10,100 tons, Gustave Eiffel. He's a French civil engineer and is best known for creating the tower. He's also made various bridges around France. He was born December 15th, 1832, and died December 27, 1923. 300 workers. Problems. The construction of the tower did not pose any particular problem with the construction site, meaning there was no problems. Yay! It was also finished before the deadline. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed and learned so much. I hope I get to visit Paris, France soon, and I hope y'all want to now as well, also. And because everybody participated in everything, you'll all get a sucker. Take a cover. Thank, Thank you, Casey! Hi, my name is Jackson. For my junior sour, I'm doing sewing because sewing helps me calm down. Also, sewing relaxes me because, because when I'm sewing, I forget everything that I was doing before I started to sew. My first slide, I will be telling y'all about who invented the sewing machine. He died on October 3rd, 1867. He was 48 years old when he died. Some, here are some pictures of the older sewing machine. Here's my first slide. I will be telling y'all about who, the history of the sewing machines. 
The design of the first sewing machine actually dates back to the late 18th century. Factories were filled with seamstress and tailors and savvy inventors. Entrepreneurs around the world saw the stitching on the trousers. There were, there were an incredible number of machine, machines designed, patents, and some things never changed patent lawsuits. The oldest sewing machine date is 1830s. On this slide, I would like y'all to come up to Miss Boo's computer and answer my question. one that you have to push the pedal like that one. A sewing machine is fun but you have to be very careful very careful. Sewing was as integral to home life as cooking? Absol absolutely it was. A woman might make hundreds of garments in her lifetime. Hope you enjoyed learning who invented it and hope you love want to sew with it someday.